Hi, I'm Mark McGall, former Cronulla Sharks, State of Origin and Australian Rugby League representative and also Hammer from the 1990 Channel 7 TV show, The Gladiators. When I was about 17, 18, all the players that were playing in C grade and B grade, the Michael Porters, a whole heap of others, all from that era, all went into grade and I didn't get graded. And then at the end, I was put on the bench for a reserve grade trial and it was Cronulla versus the Roosters. So I'm sitting on the bench, Kurt Sorensen scored, about 15 seconds to go. And all of a sudden I got a tap on the shoulder and he said, you're on. Sure enough, he's kicked it off straight down, down the throat. I ran straight up and it was Dane Sorensen. So I walked, ran straight to Dane, I put my hand on his chest. So I hit him on the chest and he planted his feet and I pushed back off him. So I said, oh, what am I gonna do now? So I just took off left. So I ran about 40 or 50 meters, I only had the fullback to beat. So I took off and I got past him and then the touch judge put his flag up. 15 seconds of um, you know having a, of an opportunity and I got graded. <music> ET and I are completely two different players. You know, ET was quicker than I was. My game started out as a bit of a runner as I was skinnier and but as I got thicker and stronger, my game started to be more power. So I try and break the line and offload and ET would always finish. A lot of people said oh ET can't tackle, but you have a look at our games, the communication between the two of us without even speaking. And I knew that he would never miss a tackle, a crucial tackle. You talk about emotions, you talk about the ups and downs of rugby league. So in the first minute, Sterlo passed it out and we're, only, we're in our 20, so we're running it out as like forward. And Gene Miles just took me out, just head eye, nose. I'm, was well, 23, is still a kid, and I'm sitting here going, there's still 79 minutes to go. That's all I thought. There's 79 minutes to go, and this is the first minute, and already I'm nose is all over my face. Last minute of the game, Turlo's passed it back across the ruck. Kenny to ET, and ET to me, and I, I had no one in front of me, and I just took off down, and the rest is history. I passed it inside, Tony Curry knocked it down, then I fought a player, it was on my back, and I dived on the ball and I, I got it down and everyone said, oh, but I got it down and it was a try and that was the last minute. So here I was in the first minute, I, I was, you know, down and the last minute you, you couldn't get any higher. So that, that's rugby league and that it teaches you that emotion. In 1993 when I left Cronulla, the main reason why I left is the way I was treated, to tell you the truth. So out of spite, but at the same time, they're losing players, they're still not, you know, replenishing their ranks. Maybe I have a shot at getting the grand final elsewhere. I went to Penrith, they had a lot of great players, but I just didn't fit in there at all. And then I went to South and I enjoyed two good years with South at, with Alan Jones. It was all initially a big joke. I mean, the football are doing wearing leotards, right? But it was a whole new different experience. Everyone had a talent. Mine wasn't the rings. I think I got on the rings and held on for 10 seconds and fell off. And then they put me on the pyramid and the, and the, the power ball, which was a rugby league based game. And they're all the things and the opportunities and the, and the experiences that you have a chance to, to do with sport. And that's why just sport is everything. You know, it's, it clears your mind, it's good for anxiety. It doesn't have to be rugby league, it can be anything. Uh, just be involved in a team somewhere. When I started the game, I was half-hearted. You know, everyone was half-hearted. And next thing I know, I was getting eye gouged and I was elbowed and I was hitting, showed that I was hitting the groin. Mal ran again and he ran past me and I've turned and I've run back and then I've realized that he was tackled, so I hit the deck. He's then come down on top of me, an elbow, then a punch, and then I got up and I just thought, hey, he's gonna throw another one. And it shows that he throws another one, but they cut all that out. They cut it all out. They only just showed the part where I defended myself. As he threw the last one, I, it was a, a turn, a turn, turn, the next thing I know he's gonna throw another one, so I just sort of reacted, that was all. I'm not aggressive on the field, I'll never start anything. But Mal and I had a chat after the game, you know, I just said to him, look, I apologize for anything, and blah, 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 and he said, you know, he said the same thing, and totally unexpected and totally weird, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Your injuries stop you from actually getting under roofs, under houses and stuff as an electrician, you know, so you have to reinvent yourself. I love fitness, so I, I went and done a fitness course, then I went overseas and 
met a guy who we did a deal with and I brought back uh, the institute. So I got into education and I've been doing that for 30 years. Teaching kids and teaching adults and all that for 40 years, I've got something to offer. So I wouldn't mind being an assistant coach somewhere along the line. <laughs>